already won, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back. Today I'm going to finish up my book haul from August, A Hooker by Crook. So this video may go a little long, but I'm still resolved to keep it as short and snappy as possible. So, for the express purpose of getting through this last batch of books, most of which are from my trip back home to Canada for 10 days last month, I'm going to only include opening sentences that are pithy in a standalone way. There might be one exception where I read an entire paragraph, but I want to keep this short and move on to other booktube video challenges. So the first few I'm not going to read any quotes from because some opening lines just don't have a standalone impact. So let's get started. The first one is actually a book that I got in Tokyo last month and I couldn't find it when I was doing that book haul video, so here we go. It's by Elizabeth Taylor, not the actress, the British novelist. I wasn't aware there was a British novelist named Elizabeth Taylor until two or three months ago, and this is the second book of hers I have acquired since then, and uh, hopefully I'll get to it someday. This is Palfrey at the Claremont. First published in 1971, this is obviously a more recent uh, reprint, and it's about the widow, Mrs. Claremont, who moves into a hotel, and along with the other residents of this hotel, battles twin demons, boredom and the Grim Reaper, according to the back. I've been interested in this uh, novel since I first heard about it last year. It's a transgender themed novel from Canada and what a beautiful cover. It's called Small Beauty and the author is Jia Xing Wilson Yang. She is a mixed race transgender writer in Canada and this is her debut. I love this cover so much but in the second edition they've printed these um, award medals on the cover which ruined it before it was just solid blue anyway maybe ruined is too strong a word but uh, I think they've spoiled it a bit it has won those two awards a writers trust of Canada award and a lambda literary award many of you probably know that the lambda literary awards are for GLBT writing all of those issues trans issues trans identity being mixed-race Canadian, are explored in this novel. I'm uh, looking forward to reading it. Next is The Past by Tessa Hadley. Uh, I've heard extremely mixed reviews of this, but when I found a hardcover for about five bucks in Canada, I snatched it up and uh, we'll see what it's all about. Uh, what it is about, apparently, is four adult siblings who go to their grandparents' home for the summer to prepare it to be sold and all kinds of stuff from the past come up but I have heard very mixed reviews so this one could be a bail or could be uh, five stars this is a book that I ordered and had sent to my parents address it's a 1977 Canadian novel called Sandbars by Una McPhee I'd never heard of it then I somehow heard of it on Twitter or somewhere a few months ago and was intrigued because I hadn't heard of it before. Apparently it's really good. Una McPhee wrote it, or it was published when she was about 60. She's been dead for quite a while. I can't remember the details. You can check uh, Google if you're interested. But there's no photo of her on her Wikipedia page, nor anywhere else on the internet. So I was quite delighted to see this on the back. This is her photo. Don't you find that so many of the uh, plot synopsis blurbs on the, on the dust jacket or on the back cover are just terrible? This is one of the worst ones that I've read. 
I'll just read you the first paragraph just because it's just terrible. So the only thing that is of any value in terms of what telling me what the book is about is in the first sentence, and then it just goes on. Set mainly in the Ottawa Valley during the 1930s and 40s, Sandbars is the story of a young girl, Hannah Watson, and her family. Hannah tells her story from the present day, but with an immediacy and freshness that let us share the experience of her youth directly, as well as in the light of later adult knowledge. As Hannah reconstructs in vivid detail the warm affections of her childhood, she is forced to remember the changes wrought upon her family by time and circumstance, changes that lead her to the partly painful, partly astonishing conclusion of this novel. Oh my god! So it's about a girl named Hannah in the Ottawa Valley in the 30s and 40s, basically. But I'm still very curious to check it out. Hey, I've mentioned Litzy a few times and Litzy is a big part of my reading life. If you're not hooked into Litzy yet, you, I strongly suggest you check it out. I have so many Litzy bookish friends from around the world and I often trade books back and forth, or there's lots of gift giving of books on Litzy. This is a a book that somebody, a Litzy lady, traded with me for a stack of books that I didn't want anymore. And it's uh, Marilyn Robinson's debut, Housekeeping. I read Marilyn Robinson's Gilead a dozen years ago. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. But I'm certainly curious to read uh, this one. And actually, this Litzy person and I, she traded the whole stack of Marilyn Robinson's fiction. So this is just the first one. I couldn't fit them all in my suitcase when I came back to Tokyo, but uh, I did bring this one back. If you're not Canadian, you may not be aware of the Giller Prize. The Giller Prize is one of Canada's top two literary prizes, and I think I have three Giller Prize winners in this book haul today. This is the first one. This is from, I think, 2010. So this would have been the first year, second year that I was living in Japan, and I totally missed this one. It is The Sentimentalists by Johanna Skibsrud. It's about a Vietnam War veteran with PTSD who decides that moving to Canada would be therapeutic. I'm not going to make any light of PTSD, but I do want to ask you Americans if you can at all relate to <laughs> the therapeutic value of getting the hell out of your Trump forsaken country uh, and coming to Canada. Here's uh, the, the uh, two short opening sentences. The house my father left behind in Fargo, North Dakota was never really a house at all. Always, instead, it was an idea of itself. Speaking of Litzy, let me tell you about Lindy. Lindy is one of my dear friends on Litzy. She's a ferocious, voracious, passionate reader, and she's also a fellow Canuck. She sent me a package of books when I was in Canada, and this is one of them. Monoceros by Suzette Meyer. This is from 2011. It is a novel that opens with the suicide of a 17-year-old gay student because of homophobic bullying. So that sounds really intense, and of course it is, but there's a lot of light moments, uh, and uh, it's not only a heavy story. Lindy uh, was a guest on the Reading Envy podcast last week. I mentioned the Reading Envy podcast and uh, I'm going to put a link to that episode so you can hear Lindy talk about it because it is an intriguing plot and I'm very much looking forward to it. Suzette Meyer is a Afro-Caribbean Canadian writer from Alberta, Canada. So the first chapter is called The End. Because you are a fag is scrawled in black jiffy marker across his locker. Whew. Lindy also sent me two other books, one of which I included in the last, in part two of this book haul, The Lost Garden by Helen Humphreys, 
And the third one is a novel about a working class lesbian. I can't remember where in America. I want to say New York State, but I, I'm not sure. It's called Cool For You by Eileen Miles. And uh, this woman wants to be an astronaut and ends up becoming a poet. As you do. It sounds really great. So thanks, Lindy. I have absolutely no expectation that you've been paying attention. If you have been paying attention, you will already know that Madeleine Tien's novel, Do Not Say We Have Nothing, is the best novel I've ever read. So I was delighted to find her debut book, which is a collection of short stories, and when I was in Canada, Simple Recipes, and I think I now have all of her published works. I've been hearing about this novel and interested in it for a few years, and then when the author died last year, I wanted to read it even more, especially after hearing Liberty Hardy rave about it on the Book Riot podcast, All the Books. So finally I found a used copy that's in great condition. Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. This is a strange story. It's about a Carney family, like Carnival, Carney family, and the parents are conducting medical <laughs> experiments on their children using arsenic, amphetamines, and radioisotopes in order to breed a family of freaks which they can exhibit in the carnival and make money. Yeah. <laughs> it's also supposed to be really moving. I love the opening uh, sentence, two sentences. When your mama was the geek, my dreamlets, Papa would say, she made the nipping off of noggins such a crystal mystery that the hens themselves yearned toward her, waltzing around her, hypnotized with longing. Spread your lips, sweet Lil, they'd cluck, and show us your choppers. Yeah, I think I have to get to this one sooner rather than later. Hey, have you read Stoner by John Williams? I think I first heard about it on from Liberty Hardy on All the Books podcast last year. Read it, loved it, and it's about an unassuming, quiet English professor in the American Midwest, and it's the story of his life from birth to death, and nothing very much happens in his life, and it's one of the richest, most perfect novels I've ever read. Stoner by John Williams. This is another of his novels that I found in brand new condition for about two bucks in a thrift store in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, and this book couldn't be more different. Augustus. So this is his historical novel of the Roman Emperor. The first sentence is great, but it's, uh, it's about a paragraph and a half long, so I won't read it, but uh, I'm curious to check out a very different kind of novel by John Williams. And hey, have you read Motherless Sunday by Graham Swift? It was one of the best books I read last year. It's a shorty, but packs a wallop. Since then I've read another by him, Last Orders, which I really liked, and I picked up this one in Canada, Waterland. This is a 1983 novel, and it's it's two and a half centuries of a family's history in which eels, ale-making, incest, and madness all play thematic roles. I really like this opening sentence. And don't forget, my father would say, as if he expected me at any moment to up and leave to seek my fortune in the wide world, whatever you learn about people, however bad they turn out, each one of them has a heart and each one of them was once a tiny baby sucking his mother's milk. Because today is Friday, I would say Alice Munro is the best short story writer in the world. But on Thursdays and Saturdays, I would say Mavis Gallant is the best short story writer in the world. But you're, you caught me on a Friday. I picked this up, a gorgeous hardcover collection, even though I've probably read many of these already in their original uh, editions, but this is a selection of her stories from 1995 until she basically and very sadly put down her pen in 2014. 
Family Furnishings. She is the goddess. The opening story is The Love of a Good Woman. For the last couple of decades, there has been a museum in Wally dedicated to preserving photos and butter churns and horse harnesses and an old dentist chair and a cumbersome apple peeler and such curiosities as the pretty little porcelain and glass insulators that were used on telegraph poles. Next up is a Booker Prize winner from 10 or 11 years ago, Arabind Adiga's The White Tiger. I've been hearing about it for years. Gorgeous hardcover copy I picked up for two bucks. It's about a complicated Indian man described variously on the dust jacket as servant, philosopher, entrepreneur, and murderer. The book opens with, with a copy of a letter that this man has sent to the president of China, Wen Jiaobao, and the letter begins. Mr. Premier, sir, neither you nor I speak English, but there are some things that can be said only in English. <laughs> Next up is a 2014 novel from Canada. This too is a Giller Prize winner. Notice the, the sticker. Us Conductors by Sean Michaels. And I heard about this from my friend Jenny of the Reading Envy podcast. I don't think I heard about it on the podcast, but I read her Goodreads review, which definitely piqued my interest. This is a novel about the life of Leon Terman, who was the inventor of the electronic musical instrument, the theremin, which I knew nothing about and now only know that this much more. It's an instrument you play without touching it. I think I've heard the music, but I can't visualize the machine. And I think I will be able to visualize the machine very well after reading this book because it's a historical novel about his life and his loves. I was Leon Turman before I was Dr. Theremin. And before I was Leon, I was Lev Sergeyevich. The instrument that is now known as a theremin could as easily have been called a Leon, a Leova, a Sergeyevich. And the last one of my August Book Hall is another Giller Prize winner. I'm not sure which year. It's outlined by Rachel Cusk. And it's about a woman who goes to Greece to teach a writing class. And everybody there tells her stories. That's as much as I could glean from the uh, plot synopsis. And I hope it's uh, a little more interesting than that. The opening sentence is... Before the flight, I was invited for lunch at a London club with a billionaire I'd been promised had liberal credentials. All right, lovely people, that concludes my August book haul. Thank you for watching.